Tony Poulos here at Communicasia 2014 in Singapore. I'm at the Huawei stand, which is actually absolutely heaving with people at the moment. And that's because Huawei have come here with a whole lot of new solutions and applications for industry and commerce and also operators and consumers as well. But today I'm with Barry Lerner, who's the CIO of Solution Marketing Department at the South Pacific region of Huawei. Barry, welcome. Great to catch up with you at last. Look, can you tell me a little bit more about why governments around the globe are looking so closely at the concept of smart cities? Yeah, smart cities is being developed by the government because they're looking at a few things. One is, is that they need to do three things. One is they need to be able to increase their GDP. Number two is they need to increase security for storms and, and, and border security. And the third one is to keep the people happy. So by keeping the people happy, they're looking at things like e-health, they're looking at education, they're looking at you know things like improving the, the, uh, the industries, the enterprises, mining and things like that. They're looking at GDP because it's a proven fact that ICT will add almost points 0.06 to the GDP of a country if they do it correctly. So they're looking at that to increase. And then for the security, they're looking at things like uh, cyclones coming in, chemical spills, and border crossings that they need to you know, keep in check. When we look at things like smart cities, we have to look at all the innovative applications and services that are going to be uh, you know, surrounding the concept. Has Huawei developed their own innovative concepts to put forward to customers? Yeah, basically we, we look at it at, at a big picture, right? We have our e-city, which is the encompassing. We have smart city, smart, smart, smart government. We have safe city, and then we have smart industry. And under there we have different applications for different ones, such as we have e-mining, we have uh, e-transportation, -E and in the government, we have uh, interconnections, you know, different pieces. And then in the uh, other one, we, we, we look at things like uh, e-health, uh, uh, e-education, e-tourism. But underneath that is where we really play a role. We call it our foundation. And in our foundation, we have our cloud, we have our M2M, we have our unified communications sitting on top of our infrastructure, and then underneath that is our devices. So we think that by having a solid foundation, we can satisfy any one of the industries or any one of the vertical solutions so that governments don't have to go out and keep repeating these things. And this will also enable governments to take data and correlate it, right? It'll also cut down on the complicated processes and the governance that needs to be done with all that. And lastly, Barry, what are some of the smart services and applications that you are offering? Okay, so basically we have quite a few. One is our, we call it the smart building. And in our smart building, uh, we've already started to deploy this, where we can go ahead and we can monitor the lights, the elevators, the air conditioning. But the uniqueness of this whole thing is that we can tell when people are going in and out of a room, correlate that to the room usage. We can correlate uh, whether that conference room is being used for video or not, or should be used. We can decide on the elevator structure, on, on what floors it's stopping on, and what floors we can start to skip. So we can do a lot of things with this uh, one solution. Another solution is our, is our e-education. E-education, we've taken a unique concept on this. One is that we look at it in two aspects. The first aspect is what everybody looks like, looks at. It's about you know satisfying the infrastructure, satisfying the video requirements. But we've taken it to the other side where we're looking at the e-course, how to do training. We also have a data that could go ahead that that principals, teachers can make strategic decisions. So we can correlate data and come out with educational uh, advice so that principals can say, you know, this teacher has a problem or this, or this unique classroom has a problem. So we, we looked at it both the top end and the bottom end. Uh, the other one is like e-tourism, where with e-tourism, uh, we're looking at how do we go ahead and take all the different pieces uh, of, of, e -tour of tourism, such as restaurants, tours, uh, tour guides, um, hotels, and bring them in so that um, in countries when, when people go to make a reservation, you have the top hotels, but then you have a lot of the secondaries that get skipped. And 
to increase the GDP and make everybody uh, happier, we, we created this unique uh, environment so that everybody can kind of get satisfied. And I think one of the other ones that's really unique is our electronic ID. So we, we built a card that you can use and put it in your pocket. It could be used for border crossings. It could be used for uh, ch when, a, when a school kid goes to school for, uh, to show that he was immunized. It could be used for picking up you know, welfare checks. It could be used for a, a lot of different concepts. So that's another one that we have. Barry, thanks for sharing that information with me and I'll look forward to more smart city innovation from Huawei. Okay.